Now very often in my drawings I like to get the eye in quite early. I feel the animal then keeps me company while I'm doing my drawing. So that's that's fun to get that in place fairly quickly. But also if you get an area drawn that's um, quite detailed and quite finished fairly early on, especially a small area like the eye, if it's, if it's uh, um, an important piece in the artwork like this one is because it's quite large because we've zoomed in a lot so if we've got an important um, eye in there because sometimes the eyes are only little dots it's nice to get it in quite early because when you detail up an area a small area like this it gives you some more inspiration or gives me inspiration to do a good job then with the rest of the drawing as well it gives you something to live up to so rather than just be doing the blocking in and you know things that are not um, as dramatic eye catching interesting through the whole drawing and sometimes people save the eye till last they think they're saving the best bit till last personally I like to do something quite detailed early on and you can see I put the grey down first because that's a major colour that we're seeing in the eye a grey and then I'm just floating some of that flesh colour on top because in the reference I can just see a hint of warmth in the eye as well. Now if things don't start looking dramatic my trademark word punchy until we start getting the real darks in the blacks so until I get that dark black for the pupil in place it's all gonna look quite lifeless and uh, a little bit dead we need the highlight, we need the dark, that big tonal range for it to really start to come alive and look realistic. Now on the top section of the eye, you can see that's darker, that's greyer because we've got that shadow and that's coming around the bottom as well. And then we've got this incredibly dramatic red. I've never noticed that with pelicans before, but it really adds an element of punch and drama and vibrancy in the eye it really staples it as the center of interest the beak is obviously interesting as well we've got all that texture on there but the eye draws you in that red the gray that piercing black pupil and then the orange the small subtle oranges on that fold of skin behind the eye So that's a deep, deep red, almost a red purple going in. And I'm trying to go in with really accurate colors. If I'm doing something that's got a lot of vibrancy to the color, you know, be careful that you don't go um, too muted with it. It's easy to mute the color by putting other colors on top. But if you put a lot of muted colors underneath, so if I'd put a black underneath this, this red, this red purple, I would struggle to get that vibrancy of color back. So it's always better to go too vibrant and then you can knock it back with a gray on top or a complementary color on top, no problem at all. A little bit of that orange at the back of the eye. I just put a bit on the eye itself. Remember it's up to us if we want to make an area where we feel is more dramatic to make the drawing even better that's totally up to us the reference photo is as a reference it's not as something we desperately need to copy exactly or we're wrong okay we're using it as our reference if we like it just as it is we can do it as close to the reference as possible but very often we do little tweaks to what we think make it even better
Remember when I said the eye will look dead until we get the black in? Well now I'm starting to add those darker tones. Watch what happens as soon as I get that black pupil in place. So I'm doing the outer edge first, then I can just small round strokes to fill it in. And you can see easily how dramatic that is. Once again, it won't look really glassy until I get the highlight in. But now I've got the pupil in, I can judge the lights and darks around it a bit better. So I can make more accurate choices as I add the refinement. Now as I continue working on the eye, I'm just going to speed it up, but I'm going to speed it up slightly, so only about three times normal speed, just so you can see exactly how it develops, but just a little bit quicker. Okay, time to put that white dot in. I put a spot of orange on there first, so I like the edge of it to look, um, to have a bit of a color zing to it. So I put the white on top, and then just a little bit of the orange will show right on the end. And then as soon as I put the white in, it starts to have that glassy appearance. So we're gonna do a lot more refinement to it, but you can see all of a sudden, is starting to look alive. Now as you can see, I'm refining it even more. So as I complete an area, I then judge it against the next area. And I can see little things like I need to, you know, go a bit darker around the eyelid or underneath here, just slightly. It's just slight differences then. Once the major areas are in place, then the refinement is just slight adjustments. Now I'm also using this dark grey pencil to put in, see those separating shadow areas 
on these feathers. It's really quite stylized. Okay, they don't look like normal feathers that we would see on a bird, and that really attracted me to this drawing. It's another challenge, something I hadn't done before. Okay, so I'm not pushing hard with the pencil. This is a Caran d'Ache pencil, so it's quite soft. And I'm rubbing these marks in place to get them down into that tooth of the paper. As you can see, I've got a lot of lighter feathers to do in between these marks, but I've got to get these darks in place first before I can really put those on top. Now I'm starting to put some white on there just to try this technique out. Is it going to, to really work by putting those dark grey parts of the feathers in first and then putting the whites in between? So, you know, even I'm trying things out, you never know that something's definitely going to do exactly what you want. And at this stage, there was another alternative. I could have put all the dark marks of the feathers in I could have put a bit of paper or something over the eye that I'd pretty much finished and then I could have used the clear fontaine um, fixative spray the freezer spray and that would have stuck that all that pastel for the feathers onto the pastel mat surface so that was another kind of a get out of jail card if it didn't work this way where I could have sprayed it and then gone on top without it smudging okay so that was another alternative I didn't need it pastel mat really holds the pastel well and because I've got the dark separators for the feathers and I didn't put that dark over the whole of the areas where there was going to be white everything stays really quite clean.
Now because the flesh under the eye is a bit darker than the highlights going on top, the highlights show up really easily. Okay, so I'm just leaving areas in between the highlights that's acting as a shadow. Now with a subject like this, you can spend hours and hours and hours over all of the details if that's what you love doing. My job is, I feel, to show you lots of different techniques so you can then apply them to your subjects. So if you wanted to perhaps do a pelican like this, but you wanted to do the whole body or the whole head really large, you know, you can spend days, weeks, months, whatever you wanted to do on there. I'm just out to show you the technique so you can apply that however you see fit. And you can see just very quickly it's got the tech the um, texture of the skin starting to come alive on the pelican and I'm going to not put a massive amount of detail in it I'm going to try to make it look quite realistic and dramatic but I'm not going to pour over each tiny little detail so let's try and keep a bit of a painterly look to it and the colors are a bit warmer down here in that section and also over here as well And then as you can see I'm gradually going lighter, gradually refining even more. Just picking out where the highlights are, slight differences in colour. You can see just a bit lighter here makes it look like the, the light is zinging across the pelicans, folds of skin and then down here as well just in a few places, not everywhere.
So as I continue to add a few more details, a little bit more refinement, remember if you want to watch the complete video of this Pelican, uh, it's on my $9 tier 2 Patreon art channel. And of course you get access to absolutely hundreds and hundreds of hours worth of other Patreon art lessons that I've done over the past four years. So if you want to skyrocket your improvement with pastels, there's also some oils on there, a limited amount of um, colored pencils as well. I'd love to see you in my Patreon art group. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Just wanted to quickly mention my Patreon channel for those looking for even more in-depth art instruction. It's packed full of pastel videos, oil videos as well, and those videos are being added to new ones every single month. I have videos for the complete beginner that have never done pastels or oils before with just limited supplies. And I take you from the very first blocking in all the way through to the final detailed drawings and paintings. I've also got some really unusual subjects as well and in all of my videos I always take you through all the details. You see everything I do, how I create my work. But it's not just for beginners, it's also for novices and I also show the best artwork that I've ever done as well. And this particular elephant video spans six hours so you know you're going to see tons and tons of details, tips and techniques. And as mentioned, I've got lots of oil videos on there too, so there really is something for everybody. And you get access to hundreds of hours worth of videos for just $4. Now over a thousand members strong, hope to see you there soon.